Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. Today we are bringing you top 50 interview question and answers on AWS. Amazon AWS has become an integral part of all modern project developments. Right from storage to route configuring to DNS to gateways, it's all in AWS. So if you are attending, attending any AWS interview, they are bound to ask you these top 50 questions and we are here to help you crack that AWS interview. This is part one of it. Let's get started with top 50 interview question and answers on Amazon AWS. The first question that is obviously asked is, what is AWS? What is your understanding? So AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. It's a collection of remote computing services also known as cloud computing platform. This new realm of cloud computing is also known as IaaS, which is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and also many, many other things like email, etc. So it's all collection of these services that makes AWS most powerful. Mention some of the key components of AWS and some of the services that you have worked with. So this question is mainly asked to see your understanding and which all components you have worked with. So make sure you mention all the services of AWS that you have used in your projects. Some of the things that you can mention are simple email service that is SES. You can talk about IAM which is identity and access management. You can talk about S3 which is simple storage device. Elastic compute elastic block store and obviously CloudWatch. So these are some of the useful components of AWS which you should be mentioning when you start your interview. This will set the tone for rest of the interview. Now the next question is explain what S3 is. So S3 stands for simple storage service. You can use S3 interface to store and retrieve any amount of data at any time and from anywhere on the web. For S3, the payment model is pay as you go. So if you want to host your applications, you can use storage device, you can use it for storing your data, your code and much more. What is AMI? AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image. It's a template that provides the information required to launch an instance which is a copy of the AMI running as a virtual server in the cloud. You can launch instances from as many different AMIs as you need. So you can configure any number of AMIs that you want. Mention what's the relationship between an instance and an AMI. So we know that AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image. From a single AMI, you can launch multiple types of instances. So you can have multiple instances in a single machine image. An instance type defines the hardware of the host computer used for your instance. Each instance provides different computer and memory capabilities. Once you launch an instance, it looks like a traditional host and we can interact with what we can interact with it as what we would do with any any other computer. What does AMI include? So an AMI includes the following things. A template for the root volume of the instance. Launch permissions decides which AWS accounts can avail the AMI. A block device mapping that determines the volumes that are attached to that instance. So these are some of the key uh, things that are included in any AMI. How can you send a request to Amazon S3? So to send a request, S3 is a totally REST service, which means you can send a request using regular uh, HTTP request through via SDK or as a REST API. We can also configure events like uh, a Lambda function or an S SES to configure an S3 Amazon. So you can retrieve, you can call the service using multiple ways. 
So list down some of the differences between Amazon S3 and EC2. So the differences between EC2 and Amazon S3 are EC2 is a cloud web service used for hosting your application. Whereas S3 is just a pure data storage, which means it's just like a folder or a directory where you can put all your files and objects. EC2 is like a huge computer machine, which can either run Linux or Windows and can handle applications of different languages. S3 is a REST interface, uses secure HMAC SHA-1 authentication keys. So how many buckets can we create in AWS by default? So we can create up to 100 buckets in each of your AWS accounts. Explain, can you vertically scale an Amazon instance? If so, how? Yes, we can vertically scale any Amazon instance. And for that, we need to spin up a larger instance than the one that you are currently running on. And then pause the instance and detach the root web volumes from the server. Followed by when you stop the live instance, detach from its root volume. Note that the unique device ID and attach that root volume to your new server. Once you do that, you need to restart it again. And there you can have a new instance which has a larger capacity and scaling capacity. Explain what is T2 instance. T2 instances are designed to provide moderate baseline performance and the capability to burst to higher performance as required by the workloads. In VPC, with private and public subnets, database servers should ideally be launched into which subnets? So to launch with private and public VPCs, database should ideally launch into private subnets. Explain what is a T2 instance. So T2 instances are designed to provide moderate baseline performance and the capability to burst into higher performance as required by the workload. So these are on-demand instances which can grow based on the workload of your uh, application. Explain what the security best practices for Amazon EC2 are. So for secure Amazon EC2 best practices, follow the following steps. So first we will use AWS identity and access management to control access to your AWS resources. And then restrict access by allowing only trusted host or networks to access ports on your instance. Followed by review the rules in your security group regularly follow by only open up permissions that you require. Disable password based login. Instead, use authentication keys through IAM or AMIs. Explain how the buffer is used in Amazon Web Services. So the buffer is used to make the system more robust to manage traffic or load by synchronizing different components. Now in that usually components receive and receive and process the request in an unbalanced way. With the help of buffer, the components will be balanced and will work at the same speed to provide faster services. While connecting to your instance, what are the possible connection issues one might face? So the possible connection errors that can happen are connection timeout, user key not authorized, recognized by the server and then host key not found permission denied unprotected private key server refused our key or no supported authentication method error using mind term on safari browser error using mac os rdp client so these are the different various errors that you will run into when you are configuring a possible connection to an instance <clears throat> what are key pairs in AWS? So key pairs are secure login information for your virtual machines. To connect the instances, you can use key pairs which contain a public key and a private key. What are the different types of instances? So there are four 
five types of instances. One is general purpose, computer optimized, memory optimized, storage optimized, and accelerated computing. Is the property of broadcast or multicast supported by Amazon VPC? No, they are not supported. Currently, they are not supported in the Amazon VPI. How many elastic IPs is allowed for you to create in AWS? So you can create five VPC elastic IP addresses that are allowed for each of the AWS accounts. Explain the default storage class in S3. So the default storage class is a standard frequently accessed. So this is the standard frequently accessed class, which is what is the default storage class. What are the roles? Roles are used to provide permissions to entities which you can trust within your AWS accounts. Roles are very similar to users. However, with roles, you do not create a username or password to work with the resources. What are edge locations? Edge location is the area where the contents will be cached. So when a user is trying to act to access any content, the content will be automatically searched in the edge location. Explain what is VPC. VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. It allows you to customize your networking configuration. It is a network which is logically isolated from another network in the cloud. It allows you to have your IP addresses range, internet gateways, subnet and security groups. Can you explain what is Snowball? Snowball is a data transport option. It is used, it is, it is used to source appliances to a larger amount of data in and out of AWS. With the help of Snowball, you can transfer a massive amount of data from one place to another. It helps you reduce networking costs. Explain what is Redshift. Redshift is a big data warehouse product. It is a fast, powerful, and fully managed data warehouse service in the cloud. What are the advantages of auto scaling? Following are the advantages of auto scaling. It offers fault tolerance, better availability, and better cost management. What is meant by subnet? A subnet is a large section of IP addresses divided into chunks, also known as subnets. Can you establish a pairing connection to a VPC in a different region? No, it's not possible to connect between VPCs. It's only possible to connect between VPCs in the same region and not in different regions. All right, so that brings us to the end of part one. I will see you in the next part of AWS. Stay tuned for that. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me. If you have any doubts during the course of this tutorial, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you for free. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next part of AWS Top 50 Interview Question and Answers Part 2. Thank you so much.